everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and this one is going to be all about uh, a request that I got somewhat recently which is about layering now I will say out at the very beginning I feel odd being the one delivering this particular hobby cheating video as layering is honestly the technique I use the least but I understand it's a it is a very popular technique and it has a lot of simple benefits especially if you're aiming at producing sort of uh, tabletop standard or or even better than that frankly you can get really good quality out of layering that's I don't mean to sound negative on it it's just not it just doesn't happen to be the way I tend to like to paint that being said I've done plenty of layering in my life and so let's get into it so for this particular example um, we're gonna be using this guy which is like this wood elf dude uh, I don't even remember their name it's not the eternal guard the other guy it's the guy with the big sword doesn't matter Anyways, I thought he was interesting because he has this big cloak, and this is what we're going to use to do our layering example. So I started out, I just did a straight base coat here, and I don't think I really need to talk about how to base coat. You put paint on the area you want to paint. Um, I didn't do anything crazy with zenithal highlighting here or anything like that, so this was literally just primed gray, and then, which I, I t if I'm going to do layering, that is my first piece of advice. If you're in a layer, and if you're going to base coat, paint everything, and you're in a layer, don't use black or white as your primer. Find a good neutral tone. Gray, if you're going to work in blues or purples or, or even greens, um, or browns, if you're going to work in reds or oranges or flesh tones or greens. Just depends on what type of green you're aiming at. Um, so, and the reason for that is because if you go black or white, you're just making your life harder because you're going to have to put a lot more layers on to get to where you want to go because that undercoat is going to make it harder to get a good base coat on it. And base coating is always the least fun part of your paint job. So stop making your life hard. Use something neutral that'll just take the color you want it to be base and go from there. Okay? Um, that's So that's advice piece number one. All right, now let's, let's talk about paints. So I'm going to go really extreme on this to really show you the distinction here. So I have like a very dark, like uh, imperial blue. Uh, I've got like an ultramarine marine type of blue here, maybe even a little, little uh, darker than that. And then I've got something really bright, like a whitened up electric blue here. Okay, and I'm doing this because I want to show you, because as part of this, we're also going to do some loaded brush, which is uh, a really easy trick for layering. It sounds complicated, it feels complicated when you first try it, but it's actually quite simple. So we've got, we're going to do this in a very extreme fashion. You probably wouldn't layer in this broad extreme but we're going to do it here just to so you can very clearly see everything and how you can smooth very extreme transitions with layering all right so let's move that out of the way let's get back to our guy here so the first thing we do is we look at this guy sort of from the top and we figure out what would be lighter right and what would be lighter is the back end of his cloak here probably this side right um certainly this piece like when you look at him like that from the top down what can you still see? All of those should be lighter. This deep recess here, these should be darker. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to identify when you're talking about layering. So we're going to get our, uh, we've already mixed up our paint, but we're going to make sure our brush is nice and wet. We're going to get into some of the lighter blue. As usual, we're going to wipe off our excess paint on the back of our thumb. And then we're just going to go ahead and when we're layering to start out, we're just going to run a line of that blue right down the uh, and you notice I'm hitting this other thing and I don't I don't really care it doesn't matter it's fine this other stuff I haven't painted that's another good thing I would say about about um, uh, about base coating a lot of people I see when they base coat they're very careful not to get paint on other parts that aren't painted yet if it's primed who cares just whatever like get get it doesn't matter especially if you're gonna be doing this so we're gonna just keep going here now, I still work in, in fairly thin paints, and that's the key. That paint that I have there, first of all, it's game air, uh, so it's it's already fairly thin. Um, and I just thinned it just a little. I use like a, just a small amount of water to thin it out, okay? Now, one of the important things when you're layering is you want to pull your paint. Since you're working in thicker paint, you want to make sure your paint is pulled to the part you want to be the brightest. So in this case, this upper part here, like I want it kind of bright in the middle, 
So I'm going to actually go in both directions, right? If I want this corner to be the brightest, then I paint down toward the corner. If I want this because it's the flappiest upmost part, then I'm going to paint down toward it, okay? So we've put on some high highlights, and you can see there that's really extreme, right? Like the transition there between those two is very, very extreme. Um, and that's okay. There you go. Another great example, right? And that's fine. That's all right. Because when we're layering, what we're doing, the basic idea and conception of layering, right, is that you start with a paint and it's this much, and then I'm going to add a lighter color over this much, and then I'm going to add another lighter color over this much, right? And I'm building this little pyramid of paints going up to my highest highlight, right? Okay. So now we're going to darken the darks. Now I'm going to do everything with layering here. A lot of times, and especially if you watch like a lot of videos, people will just do the darks with washes and such, and that's fine. Uh, you can just run a wash over everything. If you're going to do that, you'd want to do that first. Um, so we'll go ahead and we're going to drop our low tones down here in the cracks where we want it to be particularly dark. Okay, so you can see we're just painting some very extreme darks there. We've got a nice little very thin space I want to make dark here to cut between these two cloaks. So I'm just going to run it right along there and up into it. And then finally, I want to make up top here under this flappy overhang part. What well, I don't know what the heck any of this would be called, but under his flappy top part, I want that to be pretty blue, pretty dark because it'd be covered up by it. So I'm just going to draw some paint up in there. And again, you'll notice I'm not being careful. I'm getting paint up on that top thing. Who cares? Doesn't matter. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing under here. I'm going to flip it down here. I'm going to take some dark down in this section and up under his leg. And then I'm going to do it finally in between his leg here where it'd be, you know, pretty dark because it's just completely covered by him. And again, this is another great example where, like, getting at this thing, there is no way you're not getting paint on, like, his leg. And who cares? And then finally, I'm going to take that a little more onto my brush. And we're going to go up here into the top part and I'm going to run it along the edge next to his leg. Okay, so now we have some very extreme action going on, right? I mean, you can see how how different that is. If you want to darken it up more, you could always just run a second layer down there, right? And so now we're going to talk about how we build it up, all right? I've gotten my sort of base coats. I've, you might, if you've ever heard someone in a video say they block out the colors, this is generally what they mean. You block out the lowest lows, the highest highs, and so on and so forth. Now, if I wanted to layer that blue up higher, I can take some more white here. I'm using an off-white and an aged white. I'm gonna just get some of that on there, and we're gonna get some. So we're gonna get a nice wet brush because I want some water to mix into that because I'm not going to thin that out anymore. And I'm going to mix that in with the blue. So I now have, as you can see on my palette, there's my starting blue. I've mixed it with the white, and I have an even brighter uh, light blue there. Now, layering is really just taking it up another layer. So I'm going to go on that edge here where it's light blue, and I'm going to just take it up on the very edge, another big notch all right then i'm going to find here this spot and i'm going to come up again right along the edge you notice i'm painting less and that's one of the keys so here with this same technique i just want this edge to get caught i'm going to paint in both directions since i want the brightest point in the middle so i want the paint to settle there over here on this side same thing we're just going to run it along there If you need a couple, you know, you maybe you need a second little layer to really call it out. There we go. Okay, so now we can see here was the original blue, right? And then we highlighted it up to here. Same thing here. You can see where we've taken it up. Okay. Let's see if we can make sure we're perfectly focused there. There we go. You can see where we've got our original blue, and then a slightly lighter blue, and then a slightly lighter blue. 
Let's get even more crazy. Let's take it way up. I'm going to go to darn near off-white. Okay? And now, for this one, I'm going to be especially careful. I'm going to just run it right along the edge of that one. And then I just want to do an even smaller part of this one here, of this fold. And then the lower part here, and the lower part there. So that's more or less straight white now I've highlighted up to, right? And all I've done is just taken those layers and put them up there. Okay? You can do the same thing with the dark darks if you want. Like I could get in there, I could take that, mix in like some my dark blue, I could mix in some really dark purple or something. Right? Okay. So now from here... There's a couple different ways you can go. Now, the problem is obviously at this point, we are just, that is really, really strong. Like, that difference is way too stark. I can see the lines very clearly in between my colors, right? So I need to smooth this out. Like, I can see where it goes white, light blue, blue, right? I mean, it's just very stark lines. So, how do we smooth it out? Okay. Okay. So you'll, you might have heard somebody say loaded brush or something like that or whatever. But with your layers, there's a couple different ways you can smooth it out. So for this part, let's talk about this right here. Okay, what do I have here? My layer is on this side. It's my mid-tone blue I base coated with, and then it goes straight up into my electric blue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my tool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little more water into my mid-tone blue. I'm going to water it up just a little more. And I'm going to get some of that on my brush. Okay? So, what I've got is I've got my brush basically full of that mid-tone blue. And if I drag it across my thumb, I can see about how much that's covering. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just the tip of that, and I'm going to put it into that other blue. So now my brush is full of the, the mid-tone, but the tip is full of the highlight. And then I'm going to just go ahead and smooth that out just a little. And that's going to pull a little of that forward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the miniature. There we go, that's the right way. So that I've got the lighter blue hitting the mid-tone, right? Or sorry, I'm down a view there. I'm going to take it to the tip, so the lighter blue is on the mid-tone, and the mid-tone is on the lighter blue. Okay, in other words, make them opposites. And then I'm going to run it right down that line. Okay. Same thing over here. So where I'm right here, I'm going to take the higher tone in this, and I'm going to run it right up there. Okay? And right here on this edge, I'm going to run it right up there. Okay? And you can see right away how it just smooths that out. Right? Now, I could do the same thing here with, uh, now that I, so I can sort of mix that in. And I can do the same thing up another step with my lighter tone blue and my white. I've got my white on the end there, you can see, right? And I'm going to take that over the edge here with the blue, and I'm just going to kind of smooth that down. It didn't get quite enough of the other one. And that's okay. If that happens, that's all right. Well, uh, let's get some. Lo let's get our brush loaded up with the light blue there, and then we're just going to get a tip of that white. There we go. Now, let's just go right over the middle. And when we push it together, what's happening is it's pushing the paint together on your brush. Right? And what it's doing is it's smoothing that transition right out. You do the same thing over here. And right up there. Okay? And then if you've got one in this direction, you might need to flip the mini a little, right? We'll just get another little dab of white there. So we got our tip loaded up again with white, and we want to smooth it out. So again, we're going to just take that, and we're going to run it right down. Sorry, covering it up there. There we go. We're just going to run it right down with the blue hitting the white and the white hitting the edge of the other blue. Then we're going to kind of force them together on our thumb so we get to one unified color, and we're going to just trace that right along the end. Right along that smooth transition there. And if you need to smooth it out a little more, you can flip it back over, go the opposite direction. 
do the same thing there. Okay. So now we've smoothed out our color transitions, well, uh, at least on the lights, but we've still got a lot of this, we've still got some pretty stark transitions here. So that's where we get to how we even this all out. I could do the same thing with the low tones. Okay, so I could clean my brush out. And I could load up my mid-tone, which is very watered, right? You can see there, it's very watered down. And then I could just get a little bit of my very dark on the tip of the brush. That's not really going to show up, but trust me, the tip of the brush is dark. And I could do the same thing, right? So here I would need to go the opposite direction, but I could take the, the dark tone over the mid-tone and the mid-tone over the dark tone border, and I could just kind of run it up there. That is not really going to show up as well, though, on camera. You can see I could do the same thing here. It can get tough at some of these angles. Okay? But there's still a very stark contrast between my very dark and my very lights. So what I like to do to smooth this all out, your final step when you're layering, and by the way, you could just keep taking this up and down and playing with this as much as you want, but my final step, what I like to do is let's go back to our mid-tone, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that mid-tone, I'm going to go mostly mid-tone here on my palette, right? I'm going to take just a dab of that lighter tone, which I've also watered. So now i got something just a, just a hair lighter, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and thin that down, all right? Now you can use some water. If you've got some thinner medium, you could, like I'm using here, you could do that, which that's the old thinner medium you saw in the previous one. Uh, big popularity. You could use your glaze mediums, all those things. You can use a mix of all that. doesn't really matter. The point is we want to get this paint pretty darn thin. How thin? Well, if you've got a lighter selection of the color on your thumb, run it over there. What happens to the color underneath it? That's the easy way to test, right? That tells you whether or not you've got it thin enough. If you only tint the color underneath, you know it's thin enough. If you actually paint the color underneath, it's not thin enough yet. So seeing that, we're going to add just another little drop of water. Uh, I'm going to wipe off, I'm going to brush off my excess thing. And then here, over this section where it's very uh, stark, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to glaze that down. Okay. Same thing there. I'm just going to basically run that glaze over everything. Okay? I'm not really treating it like a wash, but it's not that far off. Okay? Again, I'm going to pull the paint in the direction that I want this, which is toward the line. And then I'm just going to keep doing that over the edges until I smooth out those final transitions, right? And so now what I've got, maybe if I need to get a little more of the actual paint on there instead of the wash, and then just kind of go down the middle line, and I can just kind of play around and smooth that out. Then what we get is something where you can still see the line, and I probably need to do two or three coats of this to really make it perfectly clean. And I could keep playing around with mixes of my two here. Like, I could use a lighter mix than that, right? And I could draw my excess paint, and I could just kind of smooth it that direction. What we're really doing is just kind of feathering that color down. Right? And there you go. And now what we've come to is something, especially on this line, where you can see it's not as stark anymore, right? We've kind of got a nice smooth transition. Certainly when we set him down there and he's sitting on the table, it's going to look like a nice smooth transition from a very dark color here in the very recesses up to something pretty light and bright on the highest ones. And we, so we did that through a little bit of layering and then some loaded brush to smooth it out and then maybe kind of a little bit of a glaze step at the end. So I hope that helps. 
Um, I know that took a while for me to go through that. Obviously, a couple quick tips to make this quicker. One, have your paints laid out beforehand. That is to say, have the three colors or four colors you want to use for your layering all on your palette to begin with. And that that makes it a lot quicker. Um, the other thing you'll do is, uh, when, you, when you do stuff like this on these guys, um, you know, cloaks and things like this are the kind of thing you can spend a lot more time on because they're fun, they're big, people see them from a distance. You know, when this miniature's sitting across the table and you're staring at its back, you're looking mostly at its cloak and its head. So it's things like that you want to spend this kind of time on. Um, and this lets you do very, very, very heavy transitions, right? From super dark up to very super light uh, while still retaining a fair amount of smoothness to the miniature. So, hope that helps. Hope you enjoyed that hobby cheating. And as always, we'll see you next time.